let's carry on from where we left off. Um, so, the therapist may intercede from time to time, as I said. This is often most effective when the family of the child plays a significant role in the treatment. So you can't just leave your child and leave it to the mercies of the professionals. you got to be involved. You have to be involved in your child's treatment. Treatment regimes should be very respected and parents should be involved because your involvement is going to help that child come out of that situation very quicker. Because you have got that trust and relationship with your child. So if you are introducing a professional into the life of that child, a parent needs to be around all the time so that you pass that trust on in bits and pieces to that new professional who is going to engage your child in the arts and play and in the group th therapy or the family therapy. You need to be around so that the child will develop some trust, some confidence in that new person that has been introduced to take her on into delivering that individual from that stresses of life. Because one thing we don't want to achieve is medication treatment. We want to go through, we want to exhaust all the possible resources, all the possible treatment that are non-medical, that are non-drug, so that we can achieve something without giving any medication. That is what we, 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 we want to achieve. So parents out there, teachers out there, please try as much as possible. Get involved, be vigilant, be noticeable in terms of when they are, you know, exhibiting that trait. Go to them, talk to them, ask them questions, give them suitable and appropriate suggestions and talk to them whilst they are down so that with time that communication will be therapeutic for that individual. So please, let's be very, very critical about that. But we are going to be touching on the causes of anxiety disorder and we're going to be um, talking about the biological aspects of it before we go to the other areas. So the causes of anxiety disorders is going to be in um, the page number 115. So let's get on with causes of anxiety disorder. And the first cause that we're going to talk about is biological. Okay. Low levels of GABA, a neurotransmitter that reduces activity in the central nervous system. Please, teachers, this is a bit technical, so I will just take it easy. If you don't understand, you can further research about GABA and you will understand what GABA means. So, um, I can as well, you know, as we are discussing, we will be able to touch on all the other areas that when you don't understand anything, you go and research and come back and even you can put it on below my page. Let me know your concerns so that we can discuss anything that I've mentioned and didn't further explain so that we can carry on with what we're studying. So, low levels of GABA. GABA is a neurotransmitter that reduces activity in the central nervous system contributes to anxiety. A number of anxiolytics achieve their effects by modulating the GABA receptors. So that is a bit too technical, you know, we're talking about what other medications that affect the serotonin levels in the brain that can 
sort of fluctuate it to an optimum level that will enhance that individual to sort of operate in a very normal way without being down with anxiety or depressed with anxiety. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. The drugs most commonly used to treat depression are frequently considered as the first line of treatment for anxiety disorders. So as I was talking about the serotonin hypothesis that you need to bring that levels to optimum in order for the person to be functional so that anxiety is not going to bring them down. So it's a first line of treatment for anxiety disorders that is the serotonin SSRIs. That's what I mentioned earlier on. It's called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs. These are the drugs that are commonly used to treat depression and they are the first line of treatment for anxiety disorders. But we've moved from that exhaustion of resources and other therapy to the clinical stage now. Now we are dealing with the medication, we're dealing with biological stuff. That is when it gets to that stage whereby you need some kind of medicinal properties in your system so that is going to work effectively to bring your serotonin levels to the optimal position. A study in 2004 using functional brain imaging techniques suggested that the effects of SSRIs in alleviating anxiety may reduce from a direct action in GABA neurons that rather than as a secondary consequences of mood improvement. So we're talking about SSRIs being used to improve anxiety disorders. Severe anxiety and depression can be induced by sustained alcohol abuse, which is the most you know, viable cases abates with long and prolonged abstinence. So, even moderate sustained alcohol use may increase anxiety, depression levels in some individuals. Caffeine and alcohol and benzodiazepines dependence can worsen or cause anxiety and panic attacks. So, this portion of my explanation is telling you that alcohol and dependence on alcohol and caffeine driven you know liquids can worsen your situation when it comes to anxiety so those of you who go out there and drink if you're a social drinker if you are a repetitive everyday drinker if you're an alcoholic you have to understand the consequences the results of alcoholism or drinking alcohol or drinking caffeine those who take in coffee four five ten cups a day you have to understand that this contributes to your depression if you are depressed total abstinence or moderate abstinence from all these things will alleviate will help you will go far to helping you come out of your depression. But when you are in this sort of situation, alcoholism and all that, trust me, your depression is gonna get worse. And you don't wanna reach that level of suicide, please, because depression has got its last point of suicidal thoughts. You don't wanna reach that level, please. Let's come out of depression. Let's abstain from alcohol. If you wanna drink, be a social drinker from time to time, but don't binge on drinking because it's going to activate. It is going to worsen. It is going to activate your anxiety disorders. If you haven't got one, it can bring upon you anxiety disorder. It's going to bring upon you depression. So you got to be careful when it comes to alcohol intake. 